Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him. Praise ye him. All his angels. All his angels. Praise ye him. Praise ye him. All his hosts. All his hosts. Praise ye him. Praise ye him. Sun and moon. Sun and moon. Praise him. All ye him. All ye stars of light. All ye stars of light. Praise him. Praise him. Ye heavens of heavens. Ye heavens of heavens. And ye waters that be above the heavens. And ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded. For he commanded. And they were created. And they were created. Let the Lord add a blessing to the um let the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his mighty word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, today's reading came from Psalms 148, verses 1 through 5. Thank you, brother. <clears throat> At this time, we think we have two selections by the client. <laughs> Jesus said, to show them 
the title is uh, The Spirit That Fills You. You know, um, the world, most of the world believe that they have the Word of God and that they, um, that they feel with the Spirit. The book is clear that they are filled with spirits, but not the Word of God. Um, and it's unfortunate because the Lord said, he sent this word to heal men, and men have just rejected the word from day one in the, in the very garden. Uh, man displaced the word, so, so it's no... Um, it's no secret that, that that's how it is now. Men have just disregarded the word of God. and um, But that is what's supposed to fill us up. We're just going to take a look at that. This is going to be a short lesson. It's a simple lesson. But we're going to start this lesson out in John 16, chapter. John 16, we're going to pick it up at verse 7. John 16 and 7. John 16 and 7. Go ahead, bro. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. Uh, this is Jesus, you know, telling his disciples, you know, it's necessary that I go away. And if I don't go away, the Comforter will not come. But go ahead. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Skip down to verse 12. I have, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Uh-huh. For he shall not speak of himself. So he's talking about this entity, this this the angel that's going to come with the word. But he called him the spirit of truth or the comforter. He said he's, he shall show you things to come. Um, he said uh, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself. Go ahead. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Keep going. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine. And so he said he's going to glorify me. He's going to receive of mine. And he told you he's only going to give you, you know, what, what's mine, which is the word of God. But he shall glorify me. He shall receive of mine. Go ahead. And shall show it unto you. Go ahead. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. So he's letting you know that this angel is going to come and he's going to, you know, give you some more understanding, going to give you some words, his words that the Father have given to him. Let's go over to Revelation, the first chapter, and pick it up at verse 1. Revelation 1 and 1. Revelation 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Get it, brother. Go ahead. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which gave, which God gave unto him <clears throat> to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So he told you it's the revelation of Jesus. Well, Jesus just told you everything that the Father has is mine. He said that God gave to him to show to his servants things which must come to pass. And he made it known by, uh, to his servant by his angel. Uh, to his servant John. But go ahead. And what did John do? Go ahead. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So let's go now to uh, Isaiah. So, <clears throat> so that's the protocol. You know, the father gave it to the son. The son gave it to the angel. The angel gave it to man. You know, when you talk about what fills you up, because people tell you they feel with the spirit, but then in another sense, they tell you that the spirit is the angel. But which is it? What fills you up, the angels don't get inside you. What fills you up is the message. That's what's supposed to fill you up, is the message that the angel brings. Let's go to Isaiah, the 28th chapter. Pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 28 and 1. Isaiah 28 and 1.
From the very beginning, man have rejected the word of God. And even God's chosen people have rejected the word of God. And that's why you look at the condition of our people now, and we in such bad shape. But Isaiah 28 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim. Oh, he called the drunk, he called them drunkards of Ephraim. You know, he's talking about Israel. So he said, you know, woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim. Go ahead. Whose glorious beauty is a fading flower. He said, their glorious beauty is a fading flower. In other words, they fading away. But go ahead. Which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Go ahead. Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which has a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. The Lord said he got a mighty and strong one, which is going to destroy Israel, you know, because Israel had to be taken out because they kept rejecting the word of the Lord. But he says, you know, he has a mighty and strong one, uh, which shall cast down to the earth with the hand. Go ahead. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet. So he's talking about his people. He say, you know, the crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet. Go ahead. And the glorious beauty, which is on the head of the fat valley, shall be a fading flower, and as the hasty fruit before the summer, which when, it, when he that looketh upon it, seeth it, upon it seeth, while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up. You know, when you look at the first fruits, when the, when the, when the uh, fruits first come up on the vine, you know, it ain't even summer. It ain't a full harvest yet. But as soon as they see it, they want to eat it up. And that's what he's talking about. What You know, uh, when he looking upon it, while it is yet in his hand, he eats it up. Because Israel is going to be taken out. But go ahead. In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people uh -huh. and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment and for strength to them that are that turn to turn the battle to the gate. So he said in that day, you know, he going to be for a crown. The Lord going to be for a crown, crown of glory and diadem of beauty to the residue of his people and a, a spirit of judgment to him that sits in judgment uh, to them that turn the battle to the gate. But go ahead. But they also have erred through wine. But he's talking about the rest. So he said they also have erred through wine and strong drink. Go ahead. And through and through strong drink are out of the way. So everybody's, you know, re, uh, uh, disregarding the word of God. He said they have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. Go ahead. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. So if you can't go to the priest and the prophet, then you really got a problem. And that's what happened to our people. You know, eventually he said, you know, Levi uh, stumbled out of the way. And Levi was supposed to help lead the people into, you know, through the word of God. But they stumbled. So the judgment, you know, the judge, everybody had gotten drunk. They started serving God their way. And oftentimes, they were doing it according to how the nations around them were doing, which was totally against what God had required, because God required that his people show the nations how to truly serve God. But instead of doing that, they want to follow the nations. So he said, they err in, in vision and stumble in judgment. All tables, verse 8. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. He said all tables, and he meant that. Let's go to the 29th chapter, pick it up at verse 9. Isaiah 29 and 9. <clears throat> Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. So he's letting you know that, you know, they drunk. It's just like they drunk, because they judgment and they, you know... Uh, the, the judgment is just purely defiled. So he said, it's, it's, uh, uh, they are drunk, but not with wine, and they stagger, but not with strong drink. Go ahead. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he covered. So the people that you're supposed to go to for understanding, he said, they have no understanding. They eyes, they have closed. They, they, the, uh, the seers, he have covered. Go ahead. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read so this. So if you can't go to the learned man, 
and you can't go to the unlearned man, then what do you got? You got confusion. And that's what we have today. We got confusion. Because everybody, nobody's following the word of God. Everybody wants to give you his interpretation of what the word of God says. So he says, you know, you deliver it to one that is learned. He said, I can't read it. And the book is delivered to one that is not learned, saying, read this. Go ahead. Read this, I, middle of 12. Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. Go ahead. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me, with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. He said, you know, they wasting their time. You say with their mouth they honor me, their lips they honor me, but their hearts is far from me, their minds is far from me, and their fear toward me is what? And their fear toward me is taught by precept of men. So now you're getting the precepts of men instead of the word of God, and that's why the world is in the condition that it's in, because nobody's following the word of God. Let's go to uh, back to the 28th chapter. Pick it up this time at verse 8. 28 and 8. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. In other words, you got to come as a babe. So he said it, uh, it must be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. But go ahead. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So the word of God has a method. There's a way to understand the word of God. And that's what he's letting you know that, you know, this thing got to be precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Go ahead, verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Because even though we read that, just because, you know, you have Israel that know they Israel and tell you that if you don't speak in a certain language, mm -hmm. that you cannot understand the word of God. Mm -hmm. Well, Hebrew that they teach in nowadays is not the original Hebrew anyway. But they still tell you that you got to speak, to, you know, you got to speak uh, in the Hebrew language to understand God. Well, the Lord said, you know, <laughs> um, with another tongue, was he going to speak to these people? Everybody got kicked out. Nobody speaking Hebrew. Wherever you are, you're supposed to understand or at least get uh, get the word of God in a language that you can understand. And everybody sitting here speaks English. And yet you still have people that come and sit here and tell you that you need to understand Hebrew and understand in order to understand the word of God. But that's simply not what the word of God said. But he said, with the stammering lips and another tongue, we're going to speak to these people. But he said, you know, you had to be weaned from the breast, and, uh, weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Let's go to 1 Peter, the second chapter. 1 Peter, the second chapter. 1 Peter 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Peter 2 and 1. <clears throat> He told you that Israel had, was defiled, that they had walked away from the word of God and that the Lord was going to take them out. 1 Peter 2 and 1, go ahead. Wherefore, lay aside, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow Thereby. He says a newborn babe, because it don't matter whether you 80 years old or eight months old. When you once you start reading the word of God, that's a new that's a new life. So that's a new, you know, a new creature. So he says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. That's what that's what the world needs. It needs the word of God. He told you what they were getting were the precepts of men, but if we got the word of God then we can grow. We can grow spiritually and we can grow the way the Lord expected us to grow. But he says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Let's go to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Ephesians 5. Because you need to understand. You need to understand what the word of God is and what it is that he expects. Ephesians 5, pick it up at verse 14. <clears throat> Ephesians 5 and 14. 
Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. No, who's he talking about? He ain't talking about the dead here. He's talking about those that are living dead. You know, those that are spiritually dead. So he says, you know, uh, awake you that sleep, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Go ahead. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. He said, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, because that's what the Lord expects. He expects you to understand what it is that he wants, and he expects you to do it. So he said, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Go ahead. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. He's saying, don't be drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. This Spirit that you're supposed to be filled with is the Word of God. The book don't make that clear. But he said, uh, uh, don't be drunk, but be filled with the Spirit. Let's go to uh, Revelation, the third chapter. Because there's a reward with that. Revelation, the third chapter. Revelation 3, we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Revelation 3 and 20. And I said, this is a simple lesson. It's going to be short. And, um, and it's simple. Revelation 3 and 20. You got it, brother? Behold! Give him a second. Go ahead. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. He said, I'm standing at the door knocking. Whenever you hear the word of God, the Lord said he's knocking. All he expects you to do is open the door and come in with him and he'll sup with you. Go ahead. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Now he's talking about overcoming. Overcoming what? Overcoming all of that drunkenness that we used to walk in. So he says, you know, to one, to him that overcome... Will I grant to sit with me in my throne? Go ahead. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. So that's a great reward. The Lord said you could sit with him on the throne if you would just hear this word and obey it. He said, I'm standing at the door now. If you would just hear it and open the door, then he'll come in and you can sit with him. Let's go, uh, um, let's go to uh, Psalms 81. Psalms 81. Psalms 81, we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Psalms 81 and 8. people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. Go ahead. There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. Well, that's what the will of the Lord <coughs> is. He said, there shall no strange God be among you, neither shall you worship any strange God. Because we just read, you know, uh, uh, don't walk in, uh, uh, in drunkenness, but be filled with the Spirit and understanding what the, word, uh, what the will of the Lord is. Well, he says, there shall no strange God be in you. Well, just because you don't go to a certain church or do certain things, don't mean that you're still not worshiping other gods. That's right. Anytime you're doing something contrary to the word of God, you're worshiping another god. So the Lord said, there should no strange God be among you. Go ahead. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. He said, I'm the one that delivered you out of bondage. I'm the Lord that brought you out. Go ahead. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. He said, open your mouth, and I'll fill it. In other words, listen to these words. Eat these words, because this is what you need to get life. Go ahead. But my people would not hearken to my voice. He said, well, my people wouldn't listen. Go ahead. And Israel with none of me. Go ahead. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. He says, so I gave them up to their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. So when you look around and see yourself in a condition that you don't like being in, it's because you chose that. The Lord said he gave it up to you. 
to walk in your own lust. So when you find yourself in a condition, then you know that you have a choice. You can change it. Let's go to uh, let's go to Ezekiel the second chapter. Ezekiel the second chapter. Ezekiel two. I'm going to pick it up at verse 8. Ezekiel 2 and 8. Two and eight. <coughs> Ezekiel two and eight. <coughs> But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee, be not, be not thou rebellious like the rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. So now he's sending the prophets to Israel. He said, you know, you, son of man, talking to Ezekiel, hear what I say to you and be not rebellious like that rebellious house. Uh, open your mouth and eat what I give you. Go ahead. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. He said it was a book that he gave, and it was spread before me. And within it was written lamentations and mourning and woe. Warning you about all the consequences of you not obeying him. So that's what was in there. Go on over to the third chapter, pick it up at verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So he said, but Ezekiel, I want you to eat, to eat what you find. Eat this roll. Eat, in other words, consume these words, and now go speak to the house of Israel. Go ahead. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. But he just told me in that, in that role was written lamentations and mourning and woe. But Ezekiel said, you know, when I ate it, it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Because once you get the word of God, you understand what hope the Lord has for you right. and now it's a good thing instead of all of the you know the curses that he planned on pouring upon you now you understand the reward that the Lord has so Ezekiel said it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness and he said son of man go get to the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them because remember they were walking after their <laughs> own counsel now he's telling them Ezekiel go get in my words so they can get this thing right but go ahead for thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech or of in hard language, but to the house of Israel. You see, I'm not sending you to strangers. I'm sending you to your people. Go ahead. Not to many people of a strange speech and of in hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto me. He said, I'm not sending you to strangers. I'm sending your people. But had I even sent you to strangers, they would have listened. But Israel don't listen. Go ahead. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. So he told Ezekiel in the second chapter, he said, you know, uh, uh, he said, you know, uh, don't be afraid of them and don't be afraid of their words. You know, uh, he said, you know, uh, um, he said, speak my words to them, whether they will hear or whether they forbear. You know, <clears throat> it don't matter. But now he said, you know, the house of Israel won't hearken to you, but they will not hearken to me. Go ahead. <laughs> For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have ma made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. He said, I made you just as stubborn as them. But go ahead. As an adamant harder, harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be, be dismayed at their looks. Though they be a rebellious house. He said, don't be dismayed at their looks, even though they were a rebellious house. So he knew he was sending the, uh, Ezekiel to Lord know his people. And that's why he kept sending them prophets to warn them, 
you know, you better get this right before it's too late. Let's go over to uh, 1 Peter, the first chapter this time. Pick it up at verse 9. 1 Peter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. First Peter one and nine. Because if you would get this thing and hold on to it, there's a reward coming. The Lord told you that He will let you sit with Him on His throne if you got this thing right, even as He sat down with the Father on His throne. First Peter. One and nine. You got it? Go ahead, mm -hmm. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Well, that's when you're going to get it at the end. He said the end of your faith. Not the beginning and not in the middle of your faith. He said the end of your faith. In other words, you got to hold on to this. That's why the book keeps talking about to he that endures the saying going to be saved. Because you got to hold on to this thing. I don't care what happens. You know, the dog can give birth to birds, but you better hold on to the word of God because the Lord said at the end is when you're going to get it. So he says, you know, uh, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Go ahead. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. He said the, uh, the prophets inquired and searched about this thing, this this salvation, because they wanted to know when when was this salvation going to take place. He said, you know, and, and they prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. In other words, when Christ came, they prophesied about that. But go ahead. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them. Oh, what was in the prophets? He said the spirit of Christ. In other words, the word of God was in the prophets. He said, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. Go ahead. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow. Go ahead. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister. He the said it was revealed to them that this wasn't for them. This was for those that would come after them. That not unto themselves, but unto us did they minister the things which are now reported. Go ahead. Which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Oh, how did they get it with the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. The angel brought them the message. The prophets wrote it down. The prophets went and spoke the words to the people. And they even inquired. They wanted to understand. Even Daniel said, you know, uh, I heard, but I understood not. And the Lord said, no, go your way, Daniel. The book is sealed until the time of the end. Even Daniel wanted to know and couldn't understand. And the Lord has sent Gabriel personally to go give Daniel understanding of a lot of things. And Daniel still wanted to understand some things. The Lord said, not now, Dad. It's not for you. It's for those that's going to come after you. But he says, you know, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves did they minister the things which are now reported by those that preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Which things the angels desired us to look into. Uh, read the next verse. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. He says, so gird up, strengthen the loins of your mind. In other words, be prepared. Make sure you are sober and come unto this thing with a clear mind. So gird up the loins of your mind. Go ahead. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And hope to the end for the grace is a free gift. Eternal life is a free gift. None of us earned it. But that's what we would get. The Lord told you he's going to grant you to sit with him on the throne if you would just overcome. So he says, so gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that's to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let's go over to Revelation. Pick it up at verse uh, chapter 10. Pick it up at verse 1. Revelation 10 and 1. Revelation 10 and 1. 10 and 1. Go ahead. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. 
and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. So now he's looking at this angel. John is looking at this angel come. And this angel, every time he comes, he comes with a message from God. But he said, I saw this mighty angel come down, clothed with a cloud. And he described him. Go ahead. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Skip down to verse 8. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is, which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. So the angel, so John was told to go get this information from this angel. So John went and got the book and to eat it up. Go ahead. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. You know, because once you get the word of God, you know, it comes with some changes. Yeah. Some changes got to take place when you get the word of God. And that's what he's talking about. My belly was bitter because now... The things that was okay for me to do before I had the word is no longer acceptable. So now he said, you know, as soon as uh, it was, it was as sweet as honey, but as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter because it comes with that hope, but it also comes with that, with that uh, commandment to change. And man is resistant to change. Man has always been resistant to change. Man is resistant to authority. And so now, once you get the word of God, you understand that, hey, this, you know, that's a higher authority that I got to answer to. Right. It's not just the person that I'm looking at in the face every day. You know, now we're talking about an eternal punishment or an eternal reward. So he said, you know, uh, uh, as soon as I had eaten it, it was sweet as honey in my mouth. But as soon as I had eaten it, it was my belly was bitter. Go ahead. And he said unto me. Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So now, once you get the word of God, you have a responsibility because you've got to share this thing. He said, now you must prophesy again before many people, nations, tongues, and kings. Let's go to uh, Psalms 107. Psalms 107. We're going to pick it up at verse 17. Psalms 107 and 17. Because he didn't just send this book, send this information to, he sent this with a purpose. Mm -hmm. Psalms 107, because without this, we was all headed for the fire. Psalms 107, we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Psalms 107 and 17. Mm -hmm. You got it, brother. Go ahead. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of meat, and they draw near, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and He saveth them out of their distresses. He sent His word and healed them. He said, you know, they cried unto Him, and He sent His word to heal them, because man was in trouble without Him. So he said, they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Read the next verse. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let's go back to uh, John, the 15th chapter. John 15. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. John 15 and 1. So it's the Lord here. John 15 and 1. John 15 and 1. You got it, brother? Go ahead. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Now, Jesus said, I'm the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. He's the one that takes care of the vine. But go ahead. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. He said, if, it's, if it's a, there's a branch that don't bear fruit, the Father going to take it away. Go ahead. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, 
that it may bring forth more fruit. He said, the ones that bear fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Go ahead. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Well, that's what we just read the prophet say. He said he sent his word to heal him. Well, the Lord said, you know, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. How are you clean? Though, you know, just as baptism, water don't clean you up. What's going to clean you up is you hearing this word and you obeying it. So he said, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Go ahead. Abide in me and I in you. As he said, so you abide in me and I'll abide in you. Go ahead. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. You cut a branch off a tree, it ain't going to produce no more fruit. And he said, that's how it is with you and him. If you do not abide with him, you will not bear fruit. Go ahead. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Go ahead. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. And so he withered. say, if you, if you don't abide in him, you're going to be cast forth as a branch and you're going to wither. Go ahead. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Go ahead. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you. He said, but if you <laughs> abide in me and my words abide in you, because that's what's supposed to fill you up, the word of God. You're supposed to be filled with the word of God. So he said, but if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then this is what you can do. Go ahead. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Go ahead. Herein is my father, herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. He said, This is what glorifies the Father, that you bear fruit. And the only way you can bear fruit is if you have this word in you. So go ahead. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue, continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. He said, but if you keep in my commandments, then you're going to abide in my love. Go ahead. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Let's go to uh, Isaiah, the 55th chapter. So he keep telling you, you need this word. Isaiah, the 55th chapter. You need this word. He sent it to heal you. He said, it's going to clean you up. And if you got this word, then you're going to produce fruit, righteous fruit, fruit that's going to uh, end up in eternal life. Isaiah 55, pick it up at verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yeah, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. You know, he called this word all kinds of things, but what all, everything that he calls it, it's things that are good for your nourishment. So he says, you know, uh, uh, come to the waters. You can buy wine and milk without money and price. Uh, without price. Go ahead. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which is which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. He said, listen, hearken diligently. Listen to me. And eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight your delight itself in fatness. Go ahead. Eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. He said, if you will incline your ear, and come unto me, and hear, then your soul shall live. And what will I do to you if you hear this thing? Come unto me. Go ahead. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. He said, if you would just hear this thing and do it, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. You know, the Lord showed his mercy to David, even though David was king of Israel. David killed this man and took his wife, and the Lord still had mercy on David let you know that it don't matter what you've done. The Lord is always willing for you to repent and turn back to him. So he said, if you would do that, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Let's go to uh, Matthew, the 26th chapter. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Matthew 26, and we're going to pick it up at verse 26. 26 and 26.
Matthew 26 and 26. Go ahead, brother. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. So they were eating bread. They, you know, uh, he took some bread and he said, Take this and eat it, this is my body. Go ahead. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So he's letting them know that, you know, that's what you need to eat and drink. And he says that this is my body. So he, and who is he? He's the word of God. John told you that in John the first chapter. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So he was the word of God. He letting you know that that is what you need to eat and drink. Let's go over to uh, uh, Hebrews, the sixth chapter. No, 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 I'm sorry. Let's go to John, the sixth chapter first. John, the sixth chapter. John the sixth chapter. And now he's gonna make it clear that that's exactly what he's telling them. John six, we're gonna pick it up at verse 51. John six and 51. John six, pick it up at verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews there, therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? He said, you know, because he's that living bread. He said, you know, and the, the bread that he going to give is his flesh. So he said, you know, they, they started striving among themselves. How can he give us his flesh to eat? Go ahead. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. So he let them know, you know, you got to go this way. You got to eat this or you won't have life. So he said, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Go ahead. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. So again, he's comparing himself to this to this bread and wine. So he says, you know, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you're going to have eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. Go ahead. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Go ahead. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. He said, just as the Father sent me, and I live by the Father, the one that eat me, even he shall live by me. Go ahead. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Because when they were in the wilderness, they ate that manna from heaven. And they died anyway. But he said, you know, uh, he that eat of this bread shall live forever. Go ahead. These things said he in the synagogue, and as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does, does this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? You know, because he had a lot of disciples, and many of them got offended by that. But he asked the question, you know, what if, what and if you shall see me ascend up to where I was before? Would that finally convince you? You know, but go ahead. It is the spirit that quickens. Finally, he just let, had to spell it out clearly to them. What he was telling them all along. He said, it is the spirit that quickens or that gives you life. Go ahead. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He said the, the spirit, uh, it's the spirit that's going to quicken. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That's what's going to get you eternal life. But keep going. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him. He said, That's why I told you, that no man can come unto me, except it was given unto him by the Father. Go ahead. Of, the, of my Father. 
From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. He's saying from that time, you know, because he told them he, they had to eat the word of God, to eat his flesh and drink his blood, and many of them turned away and didn't walk with him anymore, which was, wasn't, you know, unheard of. Israel had been walking away from the word of God from their very founding. But he says, you know, uh, uh, many walked away and didn't walk with him anymore. But go ahead, verse uh, uh, 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. So Peter understood that, you know, you have the words that's going to get us eternal life. And that's what he had been telling them throughout his whole ministry was to eat the word of God. Consume this word. Let it fill you up. Do what it says and you're going to get a reward. Amen. That's, that was his whole ministry. That's what he talked about from the very beginning of his ministry to the very end of his ministry. Letting the people know that you had to consume these words in order to get eternal life. Finally, Peter understood and said, Lord, where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. Because they understood that, you know, Israel kept getting in trouble because they kept trying to do it their way. And to this day, Israel still trying, not just Israel, the whole world, trying to do it their way, thinking that they're wiser than God. But the Lord said, he keeps telling you, if you, you know, if you want eternal life, you have to eat these words. Right. Let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Hebrews, the sixth chapter now. Hebrews six. Pick it up at verse uh, four, Hebrews six and four. And they're gonna let you know that, that this can't be a one and done thing. Hebrews 6 and 4. Go ahead. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. No, he letting you know that you, you could have had this thing. And then if you walk away, that's a problem. He said it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. Go ahead. And have tasted of the good word of God. In no, the verse... Oh, I'm four. Sorry. And we're made partakers of the Holy Ghost. He's saying you were tasted of the heavenly gift and you were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. In other words, you had the word of God. He said in verse 5. And have tasted the good of and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to He say if. So that lets you know it can happen. He said it's impossible if you didn't had all of this, if you fall away. If they shall fall away, go ahead. To renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put them to an open shame. So he said, let you know that once you in this, you, you better make up your mind. That's why he said, you know, uh, the law says it's better not to vow a vow than vow and not keep it. So once you've got this thing, then this yours. You got to ride this out to the very end. He keep telling you the one that endures to the end, that's the one going to be saved. He didn't tell you that it was all going to be roses, that it was going to be a good time, that it was going to be easy. He didn't tell you any of that. He said you needed to make up your mind that this was your walk and you was going to walk it. And don't walk away. Let's go to uh, Hebrews the 10th chapter. Pick it up at verse 15, 10 and 15. So, Lord, just, you know, real clear that you got to have the word of God and you got to stick to it. Right. Hebrews 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Now, you know, when the Holy Ghost brought this message, they were still under the old covenant. And they, under the old covenant, you had to write the laws over your doorposts, and you had to weather the tie, the fringes, and all of that stuff to remind you of the Word of God. So at this time, you know, the Lord sent the angel to tell them that, you know, I'm going to make a new covenant with them. And this time, those same laws, I'm going to write them inside, so they're going to be without excuse. You're going to know 
whether you are breaking the laws of God or not. So he said, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Go ahead. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. That's what the Lord told, uh, the Lord sent the angel to tell Jeremiah about that new covenant that he was going to make with Israel. Jeremiah 31, we're going to pick it up at verse 31. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Thirty-one and thirty-one. You got it, brother. Go ahead. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So he said he's gonna make a new covenant. Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was in husband. You see what he said? I brought them out and watched. They were still in the wilderness. Israel was breaking the covenant. They made a golden calf, you know, as soon as they got to the wilderness. So he said, you know, with, uh, I, I led them by the hand to bring them out, and they broke my covenant, although I was a husband to them. But go ahead. Saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord. After those days. After what days? When this covenant is in, and he's, he's talking about a specific time. When he's going to put these laws in their inward parts. And that's once he came and died and did away with the old covenant. We were under the new covenant. So he says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. Go ahead. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And will be their God and they shall be my people. He said, this time I'm going to write it in their hearts and put it in their inward parts. Go ahead. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother. And, then, and eventually this is going to take place. That you will have no longer have to teach your neighbor and your brother saying, know the Lord. Go ahead. Saying, know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. He said, because at that time I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Well, that's, you know. The Lord, we're going to read something. Let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, Psalms 95. Psalms 95. Psalms 95. We're going to pick it up in verse uh, 6. Psalms 95 and 6. 95 and 6. Go ahead, brother. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Today, if you will hear His voice. Today, if you will hear His voice. Go ahead. Harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. You say, Forty years long I was grieved with them, because it's a people that err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Go ahead. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my wrath. He said, I swore in my wrath that these people would not enter into my wrath, into my rest. Let's go over to uh, uh, Hebrews, the third chapter. Pick it up at verse 7. Hebrews 3 and 7. Hebrews 3 and 7. Hebrews 3 and 7. Go ahead. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today. He said, as the Holy Ghost said, he brought that message to, easy, uh, to Jeremiah. So he said, but today, uh, uh, at, uh, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today, if you will hear his voice, go ahead. 
Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. Now they're repeating this and reiterating this all the way in the New Testament. After so long a time, he's still giving you a chance to get this thing right today. If you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. Go ahead. In the day of, the in the day of temptation in the wilderness, <coughs> when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Well, we just read that, because he said the Holy Ghost said that. We just re rehearsed him what the Holy Ghost said. But he says, you know, uh, he was grieved with that generation, and they have not known his ways. Go ahead. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Go ahead. Take heed, brethren. Now, after all this time, the warning still stands. Take heed, brethren. Go ahead. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Well, that's what we just read over in the sixth chapter of Hebrews, that it was impossible if you got it, if you had this thing and walk away to renew you to repentance. So he says, you know, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Once you got hold of this word, it's yours. You better hold on to it for dear life because that's what it's going to cost you. But he says, take heed, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter, because, because now what we're about to read is the second part that we was reading part of in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. But the Lord said, he said, in an acceptable time, well, he came to do two things. He already did the first, and he's coming back to do the second. Let's go to Luke 4 and pick it up at verse 1. Luke 4 and 1. You got it, brother. Go ahead. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Uh -huh. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. So, you know, Jesus had just been anointed. He was in the wilderness forty days, and he didn't eat. And so now the devil knew he was hungry, and he tempted him. He said, If you be the son, uh, son of God, command that this stone be made bread. Notice how he... Uh, defended himself. Go ahead. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written. That's how you overcome Satan by the word of God. And that's what Jesus did every time Satan came to him. So he said, it is written. What was, what was written? Go ahead. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So that's how you overcome temptation by what's written. And that's what Jesus did. Every time Satan came to him, he brought to him what was written. Keep going. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus didn't say it ain't yours. <laughs> but notice what he said. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. Oh, because it is written. Well, he knew what was written. And how can you defend, how can you protect yourself if you don't know what is written? And that is how Jesus was able to overcome the temptation, because he knew what was written. And that is, what, that is how we are supposed to overcome temptation and evil by what is written. But he said to Satan, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. Go ahead. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Go ahead. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of, a, of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee well, to Well, notice, Satan knows scripture too. Because Satan said it's written, he going to give his angels charge over you. But go ahead. And in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thy dash thy foot against the stone. Go ahead. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So over and over and over, Jesus overcame temptation with the word of God. 
And that is how we're supposed to overcome with the word of God. But we got to have the word of God. And we got to hold fast to that. And we got to believe in that and trust in that. And the Lord said, if we do that and hold on to the end, he's going to give us eternal life. Amen. Let's go to, uh, let's go pick it up. Uh, read the next verse. Verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Notice, he's just going to leave for a season because he's going to come back. He's going to try you a different way. But let's go to uh, Isaiah, the 61st chapter. Isaiah, the 61st chapter. Because the Lord had the, the prophet, sent the angel to the prophet to tell him about the Lord coming and about how he was anointed to do certain things. Isaiah 61 and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And the Lord was anointed. And he was anointed to do all these things. But we're going to find out that he only did part of them at his first coming. And he still got some other things to do. And that's at his second coming. But we need to hold, we need to hold on to the word so we can be a part of it. Uh, Isaiah 61 and 1. Go ahead. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Now Isaiah wrote this, but he wasn't talking about him having the spirit on him. He's talking about, we're going to find out. But he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Go ahead. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. He said, he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Go ahead. To proclaim liberty, liberty to the captives. You know, liberty is freedom. Mm -hmm. And what were you in captivity to? To sin and death. Right. So he said, but he proclaimed liberty to the captives. Go ahead. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Because you were bound unto that death that you were sinning from. But he said, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Go ahead. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now we're going to find out that this is what Jesus uh, fulfilled at his first coming. But there's still some more of this. And we're going to keep reading. Because this talking about both his comings, his first and his second coming. Well, he only fulfilled the part that he needed to fill at his first coming, but when he returns, he's going to fulfill all of it. But he said to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Go ahead. And the day of vengeance of our, of oh, our God. Oh, and the day of vengeance of our God. You know, they kept asking him, Lord, when it, uh, are you going at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Because they understood that the, is the kingdom belonged to Israel and that they had lost it. And they kept asking him, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Because they knew that he had to pour out some vengeance. The, the Romans wasn't finna give it up willingly, so he had to pour out some vengeance. But he didn't come to do that. But he said to proclaim the acceptable year and the day of vengeance of our God. Go ahead. To comfort all that mourn. And to comfort the mourners. He didn't come to do all this yet. Go ahead. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So all the stuff that you go through, the Lord said he's going to do something better for you when he returns. But he said, you know, uh, to those that mourn, he's going to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment, garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You know what the spirit of heaviness is, Israel. You've been living it your whole life. So you know, you know what that is. But the Lord said he's going to change that when he comes. He's going to change that. Go ahead. That, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Go ahead. What else and they he shall do? build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Mm -hmm. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. He said, this time, you're going to be named the priest of the Lord. Won't nobody call you priest now. They call you anything. <laughs> anything. <laughs> he said, but at that time, they're going to call you the priest of the Lord. Go ahead. Men, men, should, call men you. should call you the ministers of our God. Mm -hmm. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Well, he didn't come to do that yet. Israel was waiting for it even then. They, they understood what was to come, mm -hmm. and they was hoping that it was going to come in their in like, they lifetime. That's why they kept asking, are you going to restore at this time the kingdom of Israel? Because they knew what came with that kingdom. 
But he didn't, you know, he didn't come for that. Let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter again. Pick it up this time at verse 14. Because now he's going to let you know that, you know, he only came to fulfill part of it. Luke 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Luke 4 and 14. Four fourteen. Go ahead. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Uh -huh. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Well, he just we, he read the book that we just read, the book of Isaiah. He said he, uh, they, they delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. They just spelled it differently in the New Testament. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Go ahead. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He said, I was anointed to do these things. I was anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Go ahead. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And what did he do at that point? Go ahead. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day is this scripture. But that was a lot more to Isaiah. He talked about the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort those that mourn and uh, give them beauty for ashes. And you're going to eat the riches of the Gentiles. And all they're going to call you the priests of the Lord and the ministers of our God. Well, they, he didn't, he, you ain't see none of that here. Because that ain't what he came to do at that time. He came to give you the words and to put these words in your inward parts and write them in your mind so that you can hold on to them. And if you will hold on to them to the end, then all the rest of those blessings are going to come upon you. But that's at his second coming. And the book said the one that endured to the end, that's the one that's going to get those rewards. Let's go to uh, um, John, the 17th chapter. John 17, pick it up at verse 1. John 17 and 1. John 17. Seventeen and one. Go ahead. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. He said he was going to give eternal life to as many as, as the Father had given him. But go ahead. And this is life eternal, that they may that they might know that. That they might know thee, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Go ahead. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Well, we see what he finished. You know, he gave, he uh, read that part where he going, you know, uh, um, and, uh, uh, Give him beauty, uh, not beautiful ashes, <laughs> Free but, but yeah, yeah, liberty to the captives, said and uh, knock them in a bruise and all of that. But now he says, you know, I have finished the work that you gave me to do. Well, that's what he finished at his first coming, because he came to give man the information straight from the mouth of God. Because in the time past, you know, the Father spake unto men through the through the mouth of the angel, but in the last days. He spoke, this, uh, the, the, the scripture actually says that, that in these last days he spoke unto us through his son. But now he says, you know, I finished the work which you gave me to do. Go ahead. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Go ahead. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest 
me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. He said, you know, I manifested your name unto those men that you gave me. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Go ahead. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Go ahead. For I have given unto them the, the words which thou gavest me. Jesus and, said, My, uh, Father, I've given those men the words that you gave me. Go ahead. And they have received them and have, have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Go ahead. I pray for them. He said, I, I pray for them. Go ahead. I pray not for the world. He said, I pray for those that have your word. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Go ahead. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Skip down to uh, uh, verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. He said, I'm not praying that you would take them out of the world either. Go ahead. But that thou shouldest keep them from evil. And uh, how? what's going to keep you from the evil? Jesus told you. I, uh, the word I sent the word to heal them. The word you are clean through the word which I have spoken. That's what's going to keep you from an evil. And just as Jesus did when he was tempted, he overcame the temptation by the word of God. And that's what you've got to do. But he said, I, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but you should keep them from the evil. Go ahead. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they, may, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Go ahead. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. He said, I'm not just praying for these twelve that you gave me, but for those that will believe on me. Through their word. That's how we have the word of God. We have the testimony that the men, that the apostles wrote. And then we have the law that was written by the prophets. So we have it all. And we believe because we get to see the whole picture. As I said, some of the prophets searched and the book told us. They searched and inquired diligently. You know, what, what the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. But they didn't understand it. They didn't get to see it. We got to see it all. And so now we have it. And we believe because we have the whole picture. For those that will believe on me through their word. And that includes us. Let's go to uh, uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the 15th chapter. Jeremiah 15. Pick it up at um, at verse 15. Jeremiah 15 and 15. Jeremiah 15 and 15. Go ahead. O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that, know that for thy sake I have suffered re rebuke. Go ahead. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. He said, your words were found, Lord, and I ate them. And that's what we all <coughs> supposed to do when we find the word of God. We're supposed to eat them. But Jeremiah said, you know, your words were found, and I eat them. And then we're going to find out something else. Go ahead. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Let's go over to the 20th chapter now. Because Jeremiah said, I found your words and I ate them. Jeremiah 20. You pick it up at verse 7. But Jeremiah kept witnessing so much wickedness. And finally he just got fed up and said, I'm done. I ain't saying nothing else. <laughs> Jeremiah 20 and pick it up at verse 7. O Lord. Thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. Uh -huh. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil. Because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. He said, because I, I, he said, you know, I was deceived. You stronger. I'm in derision daily. Everyone mocked me. Since I cried out, mm -hmm. I spake. I cried violence and, and spoil, and because of the word of the Lord was made, a re because of that, the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision day. In other words, they just kept mocking me, because I just kept giving them the word of God. Go ahead. 
Then I said, I will not make mention of him. Jeremiah said, it got so bad. I said, I'm done. I ain't saying nothing else. Go ahead. Nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. He said, but that word was just boiling up inside of me. I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. Even though I said I wasn't going to say nothing else. He said, but this word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Go ahead. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. I was weary with trying to hold my tongue, and I couldn't stop no more. I had to let loose. Go ahead. <laughs> For I heard the defaming of many. That was it. Let's go to... Uh, so the, Jeremiah just letting you know this word once it's in you, it's, it's gonna come out. That's right. It's gonna come out. If you got the word of God and you see something, you might try to hold your peace long enough, but eventually you're gonna have to say something. Second Peter one, pick it up at verse seventeen. Second Peter one and seventeen. We got a couple more places, and that's it. Second Peter one, and pick it up at verse seventeen. Second Peter 1 and 17. Go ahead. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I, I am well pleased. Uh -huh. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. He said we happened to be there when the Lord said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said we heard this. These, these 12. He said they heard this. He said, uh, uh, and this voice from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. But go ahead. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. He said, but we have a more sure word of prophecy. Just in case you need something further than our, you know, than our confirmation. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Go ahead. Whereunto ye do well that, that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. So he letting you know, we, we, we know that the father said that, you know, this is my beloved son. He said we were there. We were eyewitnesses of this. But in case you need some further confirmation, all you got to do is go to the written word, a more sure word of prophecy. Because the prophets wrote down just what God has sent by the hand of the angel. They wrote it down and that's how we have it. In fact... In the New Testament, they taught from script, from prophecy, because they didn't have Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. They taught from what was already written. Let's go to uh, Colossians, the third chapter. We got two other places. Colossians 3, pick it up at verse 8. Colossians 3 and 8. Colossians 3 and 8. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Like, he says, so put off all of these, the anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, and filthy communication. Go ahead. Lie not, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. He said, don't lie one to another. You can put off that old man with the things that he used to do. Go ahead. And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after said, the image. You have put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Go ahead. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision. Skip down to verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, richly in all wisdom. He said, let this word dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Go ahead. Teaching and admonishing, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. 
And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by He's him. saying whatever you do, you do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. So you don't want to do anything that's untoward and say that you're doing it in the name of Jesus. You need to hear this word and, and keep it. Let's go to... Uh, he just told you to put on that new man. Let me show you what happened to Saul. First Samuel the tenth chapter. We got one other place after this. First Samuel the tenth chapter. The Lord has sent Samuel to anoint Saul and to give him some instructions. And then the Lord changed his mind and made it all come to pass that day. But he says something here. First Samuel ten, we're gonna pick it up at verse one. First Samuel ten and one. Go ahead, buddy. Then Samuel took of a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him. So he anointed Saul and he poured this vial of oil on his head and kissed him. Go ahead. And said, It is is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zaza. And they, sh they will say unto thee, The asses which thou went wentest to seek are found, and lo, thy father hath left the care of the asses, and sorroweth for you, saying, what shall I do for my sons? Then shalt thou go on, go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. So Saul so was just seven giving him instructions of what God specifically wanted him to do. And he, he going to do it, but go ahead. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. After that, after that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the the, gar, the yes. garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou should meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them and they shall prophesy. So now the Lord is about to anoint Saul to be king and Samuel is doing just what the Lord uh, told Samuel to do. But go ahead, verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and shalt be turned into another man. So that's, what, that's what's going to happen once the word of God is in. You're going to be turned. It don't matter who you were before. Once the word of God is in, you're going to be turned into another man. If the word of God truly dwells in you, if you are filled with the spirit, you don't have no choice. Just as, just as Jeremiah said, you know, I said I wasn't going to say nothing, but it was like fire in my bones. I had to say something. Well, just as he had to say something, the word of God is surely going to change you if you become filled with the word of God. Let's go to uh, John, the 12th chapter. And if not, John 12. John 12. The word of God is going to do just what it can to do. And it's supposed to change you. But just as I said, if not, John 12 and 46. This will be last. John 12 and 46. Go ahead. I am come, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. He said, I, that's what I came for, that the one that believe on me will not be in darkness. Go ahead. And if any man, and if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. He said, if you hear this thing and you don't believe, I ain't going to judge you. Go ahead. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And at that time, he did come to save the world. He didn't come to judge the world. He came to save the world. That was then. But he is coming back. And this time, he's coming to judge. 
But he said at that time, he didn't come to judge the world. He came to save the world. Go ahead. He that reject, rejecteth me and receiveth not my words. He said the one that reject me and don't receive my words. Go ahead. Hath one, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. He said, you know, you receive not my the same word that I spoke. That's what's going to judge you in the last day. Go ahead. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that, that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. And he said, I know that his commandment is life everlasting. If you would just hear these words and do them, You'll get eternal life. But as he said, I didn't come to judge. I came to save. But that word that I spoke, that's what's going to judge you in the last day. And in the last day, you will be judged, whether you did what you heard or not. So I hope everybody that's sitting here and those that may hear it from some other place, that you will hear the word of God, that you will hold on to it, and that you will endure it to the end. Because that is what's supposed to fill you up, the Word of God. I hope you understood this lesson. Thank you. Our Father, Our Father, Father which art in heaven, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us. From evil. From evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.